Assume that we have a bar subjected to a force. The thickness of this bar is half an inch and the height of that is two inch. We have installed strain gauges on the surface of this bar which measures and reports us how much are the magnitude of strains in two directions, in the horizontal direction and in the vertical direction, called epsilon x and epsilon y. What we have measured in this case are 560 micro epsilon for epsilon x and negative 150 for epsilon y. We want to determine how much are first, the Poisson's ratio, and second, how much is the modulus of elasticity for this specimen. Okay? So let me start with the Poisson's ratio that we just talked about. What is the Poisson's ratio? Poisson's ratio is the relation between the normal and lateral strain. Okay? Which one is, which of these two is normal strain, which of these two is the lateral strain? The strain along the direction of stress or along the direction of force is called the normal strain. The opposite to that, the perpendicular to that is lateral. So in this case, force is along the x-axis. So a strain along the x-axis is the normal strain and a strain along the y-axis is the lateral. So I can simply divide them together to get the Poisson's ratio. So nu is negative epsilon lateral divided by epsilon longitudinal. The lateral strain is epsilon y, longitudinal strain is epsilon x, and if I do the calculation, I will come up with 0.268 as Poisson's ratio. Poisson's ratio, as the name stands for, is the ratio. It's a unitless parameter, so it's just a number. By the way, this number is always between 0 and 0.5. It can't be larger than 0.5. All right, now let's talk about the modulus of elasticity. For the modulus of elasticity, or E, we need to find how much is stress and then relate that to the strain, to the, to the longitudinal strain. But how can I determine the stress? Do I know how much is stress in this case? No, we don't know how much stress, but we do know how much is the magnitude of force in this case. And I know how much is the area of that, so I can determine the stress sigma x is e epsilon x, or e would be sigma x over epsilon x. Epsilon x is given. It's 560 micro epsilon. I need to determine how much is stress in that direction. For determining stress, I need to determine area and force. Let's start with force. How much is the force in that element? It's very simple, but it's tricky. The force is 18 or 36 or 9. How many of you go for 9 kips? Half of the P. How many of you think that P is 18? Never guess how much is the force in the structure. Always use free body diagram to determine how much is the force, even in this simple case, because that is the source of mistake. Let's do that and see how much is the internal force. What is a free body diagram? Once we say free body diagram, we need to cut the structure make it free, and then put unknown force at the cut section, use some of the forces in the x, y, or some of the, the equilibrium equation to determine how much is the internal force, right? So I'm going to cut it somewhere between A and B, and draw that here. At the cut section, I need to put unknown force, which I call it, say, F. Now I will say some of the forces in the x direction should be equal to zero. And from that, I can determine how much is the force. The right answer for this question comes from the free body diagram, right? So F would be equal to P equal to 18 kips. And I have done the first part. The second part would be calculating the area. Area is simple because that is a rectangle. Height of that is 2 inch. Thickness of that is half an inch. So that gives me 1 squared inch. And the stress in that element is 18 KSI. Now, by having stress and strain, we can determine how much is the modulus of elasticity. Modulus of elasticity is sigma x over epsilon x. Sigma x is 18 KSI. Epsilon x is 560 micro epsilon. I need to convert that into epsilon by multiplying that by 10 to the minus 6. And that gives me 32,000. 140 KSI. That is the modulus of elasticity for this material.